I'm going to talk a little bit about function transformations. And uh, we can memorize some rules behind how they work, but I do want to talk briefly about why those rules work the way they do. The first kind of transformation I'm going to talk about is a vertical translation or a shift. Uh, we have our function f of x, and I want you to try to think of this as a generic function. It doesn't have to have this particular shape for the ideas we're talking about today. And g of x is our transformation. We're taking f and then we're adding something to it. We're adding a constant to it. And so if I turn that on, it'll be blue. And because I'm adding zero right now, it doesn't change it. But if I increase this and add, say, five, it shifts it up. And if I add a negative value, it shifts it down, which is pretty intuitive for most people. It sort of works the way they expect. Um, I want to track a specific point just to make sure we can see why that works the way it does. I input my x naught value, my uh, main value, and I input that into f. So I apply my red function. So I have a red line showing that I've applied the red function to it. And I get this value. And then I do my transformation. And I'm going to show transformations as green dashed lines. So I transform it by adding 4. And I get then my blue value, which I have here is g of x naught. So that was my original input. And I get this output. And I just jump up by 4. And of course, if this were negative, then I'd be jumping down by a certain amount. It's a little hard to see here, but the dashed line is overlapping the red, pulling me down that direction. Let's put it back at 4 and turn our function on. If I did that to every point on the graph, then my whole uh, function shifts upward. One thing that is sometimes tricky for people to see is the gap over here, right? This green gap is constant. It should always be a gap of 4. But over here, that doesn't visually look to be the case because the function's really steep vertically and uh, are increasing and really steep decreasing here. But that's just sort of uh, the two lines are close to each other. But if I put this over here, if we look at the actual vertical jump, right, a straight down drop is still four. Um, it's just a little harder to see that visually here. All right, now let's look at the horizontal translations where we translate the graph side to side. Those are a little trickier to see what's going on. And the reason why is because the transformation happens first. So here I do my function like normal and then I would slide it up or down. Here I'm adjusting the X left or right and then I'm applying the function. And that's why it doesn't always work the way we expect. Again, the function overlaps perfectly because right now I'm not adding anything or subtracting anything from the X. But if I increase it, it actually moves to the left, which is not what most people expect. And if I use negative values, it moves to the right. So let's shift it by four and take a look at a specific point to track what's happening. I'm going to input two. That's going to be my main input to this function. But, but before I apply F, first I have to shift it over by four. And so the way I like to think of it is the X values, I think of starting all the way at negative infinity and kind of running across my X values and seeing what happens. And so I'm jumping ahead in that process, right? If I were doing just the F function, I'd report this value, but I'm not doing F of two. I'm jumping ahead to six. I'm adding four. I'm jumping to six. I am now grabbing a point off the function. And then um, that's what F of six is, but I'm working on two. So I need to report that down here um, over my two value. So G of two, is actually down here at this um, almost negative seven value. And so again, the way I think of that is that I wouldn't have gotten to this height in the graph until six normally, but I jumped ahead and got it four earlier, four units earlier than I would have. So I'm getting the graph to show up four units earlier than it would have, which means it's shifted four units to the left. That's how I like to think of that graph or this process. And then um, if H is negative, the opposite is happening. I am shifting, let's put ourselves, uh, let's put ourselves right here at negative one. I am shifting, and let's just turn everything off again for a second. I'm at negative one, um, but I'm slowing my, or I'm backing myself up. I'm not jumping ahead anymore, I'm jumping back. Uh, and then I'm getting the value from there and reporting it here. So I'm not getting to this point in the graph, this height, until later, because I jump back to get an old value, essentially, and that shifts my graph forward. 
All right, now let's talk about a vertical stretch, and this will be very similar to the vertical translation. So we've got f of x. Right now we, we do our function, and then we multiply in, in a way to stretch it in some way. Multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. If I increase this, I'm stretching it more. If I go between 0 and 1, I'm flattening it out, right? Because I'm sort of um, shrinking this. If I go negative, I flip myself over because a negative sign will flip all our values. And if I'm between 0 and negative 1, though, I'm still flattening. And then past negative 1, I'm stretching. So it works the same for positive and negative in terms of stretch. Uh, the question is just whether it's flipped over um, because of the negative values. So we'll just focus on the positive part. And let's stretch our graph by 3. Oops, let's type this in here. Stretch our graph by 3. And let's follow a specific point and see what happens. So I'm going to look at x naught. It's at around 2.4, because that roughly matches up with this peak. I am going to apply my function, and then I am going to multiply that value by 3. So I went this far, but I have to do that a total of three times. I go 1, 2, 3. So it's always three times as tall as it would have been. And um, that would apply for a negative value as well. Right, if I'm here at about four and a half, I go this far down, you know, negative this far, and then three times that total to get to g of x. So it's very similar to the vertical transformation. And then if this is a flattening process, let's move back over here. It's a little harder to see with the animations I have, but we jump up to f, but instead I only want to go half as far, right? I'm not going that whole length, I'll only go half of the length, and that will flatten out my graph. All right, finally, we'll do a horizontal stretch, which is maybe the most complicated one that should, it'll, it should remind you a lot of the horizontal translation. So again, I've got my function, but the difference is that I do my transformation before applying the f function. Um, right now I'm multiplying x by 1 so it doesn't do anything, but if I increase, I actually shrink my graph. And if I decrease between 0 and 1, I sort of stretch it out. So up here I'm uh, compressing the graph, we might say. And then again, the negatives just flip everything, but um, they flip over this axis. But I want to focus just on the positives to make sure we can talk through this. So let's stretch by a factor of 3 again turn off this and follow a point. We're going to input 2, but now we have to multiply that by 3. So very similar to the translation, we're jumping ahead. And I, if for this one, instead of imagining starting at negative infinity, I like to imagine starting at 0 and running my x values this way, and then starting at 0 and running my x values that way. So I, um, normally at 2, I would only be getting this value but I've jumped ahead three times as far, two, four, six. And so I'm gonna report an earlier value than I would have normally reported. I'm gonna grab that negative seven, but I actually report it here over x naught because it's g of x naught. So I'm getting to all the points in my graph much faster than I would have. I'm getting to them sooner than I would have. And so I shrink my graph and report it. And the same thing happens on the other side Let's go, to, um, let's go to around one and a half. At ne if I start at zero and I'm moving towards the negatives, oops, sorry about that. If I'm starting at negative one, at zero and moving, I get to negative one half. Normally I'd only be here on my function, but I jump out three times as far and I get a much sooner value. So my function is just happening sort of a lot faster is how I like to think of it. And then finally, if we go to a compression version where we're um, stretching the graph out, it's doing the opposite. Let me turn these off. And let's put this at around 6. Normally, I would want to report this value for 6, but I've slowed myself down. I've only gone half as far away from 0 as I would have. I didn't get all the way to 6 yet. I'm really only at 3. So instead I'm reporting, I'll turn this off for a second, I'm reporting that value over my function. So I'm getting to all my values more slowly. All right, so those are the ways I think of these function transformations. And hopefully that helps you understand why the ones that happen inside the function 
operate a little bit differently or op the opposite of the way we might expect compared to the one the way the ones in the vertical transformations work. All right. Please send me your math questions about this video or anything else at mathematfk at gmail.com or leave a comment on this video. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Math's not a problem with math, math.